Today we'll be testing the capabilities of the Twister 6 slug as a defense round loaded in a mid-length hole. This is Jeff of Tau Fluttermouse bringing you the most exotic 12 gauge rounds from around the world, sent to us by viewers like you. Today's submission was by a viewer that just goes by the moniker Psycho Clown. We'll call him PK from here on out, but he used a mold imported from Russia from a company called Bullet Molds AS Company, and they call this the Twister Slug. The slug is attached by a screw to a BRP-12 gas seal. To ensure we have proper alignment of the slug to the gas seal, we simply use an unfired hole as a jig. I've seen a lot of people really overthink this and use a lot of other contraptions, but it really is this simple. You can see if you have perfect alignment simply by rolling it on a hard surface. The twister is a controlled fragmentation slug. When it impacts a material like flesh or ballistic gel in this case, it will break into seven different pieces, creating pretty gnarly wound tracks. Using the same mold but different center pins, the twister can be created with three pedals, four pedals, five pedals, or six pedals like the one we're using today. Although this isn't officially called the Twister 6, just for the sake of continuity, that's what we're calling it. Now because we're using that shorter BRP-12 wad, which is only 20 millimeters tall, we're gonna load these into a two and one quarter inch hole instead of a two and three quarter inch hole. While this isn't much of a difference, it does allow me to load nine of these into the tube of my Mossberg 590 instead of just eight two and three quarter inch shells. The Twister 6 weighs in at a respectable 36.5 grams or just over one and a quarter ounce. That's pretty hefty considering a foster slug weighs in at one ounce. Now let's head out to the range and let's do the twist. We're gonna shoot them at uh, 10 yards, fully rifle barrel, and uh, hopefully we can capture one and see what the results are. 1,205, or nine, I'm sorry. 1,209. Using full rifling with the attached wad, which it may or may not need with full rifling, we had good stability. But as you'll see in the other tests, that wasn't always the case. We did have a little bit of wonkiness going on using full rifling. Minimal over penetration. Wow. Still a lot of energy there. Everything stayed together. Pedals didn't separate, but with that expansion, there's a lot Look, of transfer. The wad, it looks like it compressed pretty uniformly too, which is really important. Let's, let's try it out of a smooth bore. Let's do that. There's so many people, um, there's so much mentality out there that rifling makes everything more accurate or better or something somehow. But these things aren't designed for rifling. <laughs> Russian stuff is not designed for rifling. They can't have rifled shotguns there. And um, because of their laws. So they make fantastic slugs to compensate for that. We've gotten a little lazy here in the United States and don't innovate as much as we should, but the, com the countries that have these very strict laws on rifled barrels and stuff end up producing some really good stuff. Yeah, they say necessity is the mother of invention. Exactly, yep. We'll make, well, okay, no no rifled barrel, we make slug as accurate as rifled barrel. That's, oh, that, that was horrible, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, smooth bore, this time with bead sights, but Danny doesn't need a red dot. Okay, let's see if the velocity is any different. Let's see if the accuracy is any different. Stability, damage. Okay, I'm ready. Eleven fifty-seven. Oh, I think that one went through. Uh, I believe so. <laughs> I 
Out of a smoothbore, which most people own for a defense shotgun, the slug performed beautifully. And so far, I'm really happy with how well that BRP-12, that green wad, is holding up to the test. Danny and I were trying to figure out why we had lower velocity on a on a, the smooth bore, which has a four inch long, longer barrel than the rifled barrel. Why we're getting lower velocities? I mean, and what's the theory there? Uh, it's just a theory at this point. Theory. My theory is is uh, the lower powder charge, the 25, might be using up all of its power before it reaches the end of the barrel. Uh, and then it starts just becoming drag through the barrel right. and slowing down a little bit. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right. One of the big surprises of this test was how much energy these slugs delivered, even at these lower velocities. The slug did fragment as it passed through the magazines, and you could see some of the orange petals flying through the air. All right, here we go. Here we go. At this higher velocity, the slug still performed very well using that BRP-12 gas seal. And I think you'll agree that smoothbore performance with these slugs is rather impressive. Now one may argue that this velocity may be a little excessive for a home defense situation, but you're an adult and you can make your own decisions. Okay, Danny, is there anything we can learn from that big mess there? Don't is use it... wet magazines for a bulletproof vest. Oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> um, I think I was right on target here. You were, on that one. you were dead on on that one. All right. Well, we had full pass through up to that point on both of them. And confetti out the back. <laughs> yeah. Ten twenty-four. Is that right? Ten twenty-four. Ten hundred and twenty-four. Ten hundred and twenty-four. I'm sorry. In our tests, we had sort of mixed results using full rifling. Now, we really can't complain about the accuracy. The accuracy was quite good, but the stability, as you can see in the high speed, is a little bit wonky in some of the shots. Remember, the slug is engineered to be shot through a smooth bore, and to think that you're going to get better accuracy with rifling is kind of like thinking that you're going to get better accuracy from a rifle if you put fins on the bullet. That was 1071. Once again, we're really happy with the accuracy through full rifling. Now, one thing you may not have noticed is we're now firing these things at subsonic speeds. At this low velocity, a lot of expanding bullets simply do not expand at all. But the twister had no problem fragmenting and dumped a lot of energy in the process. Okay, the ballistic gel is getting a little sad looking, and I'm eventually gonna, probably going to turn them into like ballistic gummy bears or heads or something like that. But what, I did bring getting? this out just in case we needed it. We got 10 inches through the short part. But the, the whole idea is to just show the fragmentation, and um, from a side shot, a side shot this time, not you know, not from the perspective of the shooter. And again. Um, low velocity subsonic usually you need to get supersonic to cause fragmentation like like that like we've seen but not with these things good hydraulics yeah 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 it's surprising good idea. all right here we go Now this is the same powder load as the last two shots, subsonic, and look at the devastation it does to that gel block. If you're a hunter and you're thinking about using these for hunting wild boar or deer or something like that, you're probably wondering how much damage this round does to the meat. Well, let's find out. Uh, the infamous meat target that everybody wants. Yeah, it's. I hate wasting food, but it's for science, you know, and... 
we can't bring out a whole pig or nothing like that, so we got a pork shoulder here. I'm shooting a whole pig would be kind of gruesome, and I don't know where I'd keep it in my garage. Provided we can hit center, should be a, not a problem. We got uh, mm, about eight and a half inches of meat there. How wide is it? I'm uh, not bragging. <laughs> All right. Overall, six by, uh, let's call it eight. Yep. 10.46. Once again, we're using full rifling and right before it impacts the target, which is at 10 yards or 9.1 meters, the slug really begins to twist around wildly. I think at higher velocities and at di longer distances, that would be less noticeable. And the entire point of this video is to see how well these slugs will perform at lower velocities at a self-defense range of 10 yards or less. Okay, Danny, did it tenderize our meat for us? Uh, I would say it did. You can take the plastic off if that helps. Oh, look at that. There's a bone in there, but I think we missed the bone. Yeah. No, we broke some bone. Oh, interesting. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Turn away, kids. It's going to get graphic here. Yeah. I'm going to show you. Never mind. <laughs> Look at this. This is all shattered bone in here. Wow. Uh, Any sign of the slug or? Wow. That really broke up that bone big time. Yeah. This is all. I think some people do hunt like wild boar with these things. This is what, shoulder? Yeah, pork shoulder. Pork shoulder, well, not much shoulder left in that one. Uh, well, we got an exit here. Look at that, look at that. Right oh, there's a piece right there. Right there. Look at that. Didn't expect that. Nope. That's like Buffalo Outdoor lock there, right there. One there, one there. I just want to mention, if you if you aren't subscribed to Buffalo Outdoors, he is one of the nicest guys I, I know of on the internet. If you love TN Outdoors 9 and his ballistic test, you'll love um, Buffalo Outdoors. <laughs> hey, he just happened to have his shirt on. Look at this, even all the way through, shattered the bone. Wow. Okay. Jeez. And that was, these are just kind of low velocity rounds. I forgot to bring my wetsuit. Uh-oh. Okay, let's do it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Well, Danny, I am actually quite impressed with that one. Subsonic velocity, full fragmentation. What happened? Well, we went through the bottom of the jug, which is the thickest part. You know, everybody's gonna be setting that jug down hard or slamming it down or dropping I, it. At work we had these jugs and I think I dropped one off like a it was an accident, but it was a like a five-story building. No, I'm kidding. No, I've dropped them like, you know, chest la height and they don't break. No. They're polycarbonate and very tough. Very tough. Yeah, that one shattered, broke. The fragments flew both directions. I, I on the high speed it looked like I saw a couple fragments making it all the way out the jug, the end there. I'll we do have some tears here, right there at least. We got dents. Got dents there. That wasn't there before. Dent I there. Small one there. And I thought I saw another one here, yeah, right there, a little. Okay. Little ding, and then I think they kind of went sideways because this is what we found. Yep. Yeah, we found a lot of it, it and. Think about how nasty that is. Those those are some sizable pieces of lead fragments. Yeah, each the size of a 25, 30 caliber. You're right, yeah. And maybe I'll weigh those and, and figure it out. And then, this time we recovered the basin and, and the wad. And I just want to show people something here. The um, the screw came through the bottom of the gas seal, and I think. 
some people may have an issue with that thinking they're going to lose their gas seal but it's kind of like um, when you get a tire uh, nail in, in your tire you're not going to necessarily get any leakage until you take the nail out so i think we just you know kept our gas seal fine even though the screw was sticking out but yeah i definitely like these wads a lot better we have um, a better more uniform compression going on amazingly even at subsonic speeds we had great fragmentation that would make a great home defense round yes. any thoughts danny well i agree with you on as far as a home defense round this traveled we found it what maybe 10 12 feet out there past the yeah it didn't make it very far and then uh, these were kind of yeah. Just all over the place. Yeah, Le about in that same area. Right, that, yeah. Left and right of the target. Uh, some of it probably, these that, these that dented, probably got flushed back out when the water came out. Yeah. And I got mm, a little bit wet. Yeah. We, we kind of suspected, knew that was going to happen, but it's a hot day out here. And Felt good. I thought, I thought I was going to spray the cameras. Actually. A little splash back. <laughs> Is the twist around the perfect home defense round? In my opinion, it worked fantastic but these are just my opinions and I'm just another knucklehead on YouTube but we do the tests you see them and you decide for yourself Danny and I had a lot of fun filming these things for you guys and I hope you enjoyed it if you don't mind take the time to rate the video and if you hate it please rate it I just want to take this time to again thank our patreon supporters these folks stepped up to the plate and really helped us out during some rough times on YouTube but this year has gotten a lot better and we're actually asking our Patreon supporters to cut back or even just donate to a different channel who might need it more than us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.